Hello again, everyone. Jessica with From Dream to Seed, and today I'm going to be giving you a late spring, early summer, full garden tour. So to give you a really quick overview of the property that I garden on, I would consider myself a very typical backyard suburban gardener. I live in a neighborhood. Um, my property is about roughly half an acre, a little bit under, and I'm gardening on a, a fairly small portion of that. Um, I have 11 raised beds, so I'm mainly growing in raised beds, but I also do have in-ground beds that I grow berries in, um, some larger plants, and also a pollinator bed, which I'll be showing you today. Um, I'm not gonna really take you through the front of my house because it's, I would say, fairly typical formal landscaping, a lot of shrubs. I do have some things like Shasta daisies and some knockout roses thrown in just for pollinators, um, but for the most part, I'm gonna focus on the back of my house, which, which is where I do the majority of my gardening. So behind me, you can see my raised beds and I have 11 and we started off with three and eventually expanded to 11. And you'll see some kind of interesting shaped raised beds and that's because it actually meets in the corner of my yard because I wanted the angle to face my house so that I could see it. So we do have some um, triangle, triangular shaped beds, um, but this is where I grow the majority of my vegetables for my family. And the eventual plan for this area is to actually fill in between the beds with um, small rock or gravel just to make it easier. Right now we're having to weed eat in between the beds because obviously we can't fit a mower in between and it's really a pain, especially because I have soaker hose connections between each bed and so every time we want to mow or weed eat we have to lift those up and get them out of the way. So that's the long term plan but for right now I'm going to take you through each bed and show you what I have growing. This is my first bed and you can see it's one of those interesting shaped beds but it's because we had to follow the fence line here. So in this bed I have peppers and so I actually don't eat a ton of peppers. I mainly grow them for other people. <laughs> so you won't see me um, pinching or doing a lot in the way of pruning these peppers. Not that I really would for bell peppers anyway, but these are jalapenos, mainly because I'm just growing them for um, friends and family and also my children sometimes sell them in the neighborhood. So I have two jalapeno peppers. I have two orange and two yellow bell peppers. And then you'll also see that I love to tuck marigolds and cosmos and herbs in my garden, mainly to encourage pollinators to come in, but also things like marigolds and strong smelling herbs can help deterring pests in your garden. I don't rely on that completely, but they definitely can help and they just look pretty. This is my potato bed and you can see I plant pretty high intensity when it comes to potatoes. Um, because I have beds that are at least 12 inches deep, this one's actually closer to 15, but they're doing well. I've had quite a bit of flea beetle issues uh, this season. Because they are in bloom right now, I'm not spraying crazy heavily. I have done a little bit of neem oil, but it doesn't seem to have done much to deter them. But let me tell you the varieties that I have. So I have a prairie blush, which is a determinant, an early determinant. In the middle, I have King Harry, and in the back, I have an indeterminate potato uh, butte variety. Here is one of the three original beds that I had put in. So you can see it's connected to a trellis over to the other bed. Say hi, Scout. Say hi. <laughs> um, and it's gonna definitely need to be replaced this year, maybe next, if I can stretch it a little bit longer, but the wood, has definitely rotted on the bottom. We did not use the correct size or thickness of wood. So we are going to be replacing that. You can see how it's kind of bowed out on the side. So I'm hoping to get it through this growing season at least. But on the trellis, I have some sweet peas that have definitely taken their sweet time and growing, but they are starting to take off a little bit. So hopefully I'll get some blooms soon before the weather gets too hot. And mainly in this bed, I have onions growing and I grew these from seed this year and I have lots of different varieties. I like to do Cortland and I think it's Bridger. Those are my main ones that I grow for storage and they've done really, really well for me. I have a couple red varieties, red storage and an, um, an Alice Craig as well. And again, you'll see the marigolds tucked in. I also have some Cosmos. These are lemonade cosmos and they're just super sweet i love this really pale kind of yellow color and in the middle i actually have a volunteer tomato i had so many of these come up this year sometimes my compost gets hot 
hot enough to kill the seeds. Apparently it did not this time around because I had hundreds of tomatoes coming up. So this is one I actually transplanted from another part of the garden, but I'll be staking and pruning this pretty soon. I'm not gonna heavily prune it because it very well could be a cherry tomato and I don't usually prune my cherry tomatoes. So I'm gonna wait until it starts fruiting until I can figure out what it is before I heavily prune, heavily prune but I will probably at least prune from the bottom. And here I have some delphinium that I actually winter sowed and it's getting ready to bloom. I'm really excited. This was an experiment for me this year. I've never grown this before. This is supposed to be a an annual a King Harry delphinium. So we'll see, but yeah, I was really happy with the winter sowing project. They turned out really well and they've just really started to take off. Here are my carrots and I just did a really small sowing in the spring. I do a much larger sowing of carrots in the fall, but right now I'm growing some Scarlet Nantes and a Danvers, I think a half Danvers variety. And then this is also a kale plant that I overwinter. So kale is biennial, which means it will go to seed its second year. So you can see the flower blooms are pretty much done, but it will start to send out these seed pods. And so I'm waiting for these to mature and dry up a little bit so I can collect the seed for kale. This is a bit of a mixed bed. And again, this is one of those older beds that are probably going to have to be replaced. But I mainly have tomatoes growing in this bed with some other stuff tucked in. So again, more marigolds and super cute cosmos. And then I have two black cherry tomatoes. Now I don't routinely prune or at least heavily prune cherry tomatoes because with cherry tomatoes, I'm going for quantity and not quality. So usually I don't prune the suckers off or anything because I want as many branches and flowers as possible. I will go and prune the bottom 12 inches of leaves usually just to help prevent fungal diseases. But usually the only time I am pruning cherry tomatoes is if I do notice an issue with fungus and I need to create more airflow. So I have some basil and some dill tucked in and I will let these herbs go to flower to help attract pollinators. And also again, sometimes the strong smell of these herbs can confuse pests that are trying to find specific plants, for, for example, tomato hornworm. But here I have pineapple tomatoes. It's a really delicious yellow, super sweet heirloom variety. So I will definitely be coming in and pretty heavily pruning these. So I will prune off the suckers and I am going to do a double stem prune this year. Last year I did a single stem and it was a little bit too stressful for my tomatoes in the heat that we get. So this year I'm gonna go with a double liter and see how it goes. And then over here, again, I have another volunteer tomato that I transplanted. No idea what variety it's going to be. And I planted like eight varieties of tomatoes last year. So this could be some kind of hybrid, <laughs> who knows what, but I'm excited to see what it is. And this bed looks empty, but I actually just sowed some royal purple um, bush beans and also some provider bush beans. I originally had salad greens, lettuce, kale, spinach in this bed and it was starting to bolt. So I went ahead and pulled it. But if you're interested in the type of supports that I use for garden covers, row covers, or if you're interested in how I water my garden with soaker hoses, I have done videos on these and I will link them both below. So again, this is another very interesting shaped bed that we had to put in the corner of my property, but I mainly plant flowers in this bed. So I have some marigolds, I have some lavender that I actually grew from seed. I was really happy with how fast it grew this year. I have some cherry caramel phlox, it's so cute, that I collected seed from last year and regrew. I also have some daisies thrown in. This is actually called a curry plant. It looks like lavender to me, but it's not, it's curry, a curry plant, not curry like you eat. But the leaves, um, when you break them off and kind of rub them between your fingers, it smells just like curry. It's such an in interesting plant and it's supposed to get some really pretty blooms on it. So a funny story about these guys right here. I sewed pumpkin on a stick at the beginning of April. Three weeks later, nothing had ever come up. The seed was a little bit old. I assumed that the seed was bad. They weren't gonna germinate. So I sewed Tythonia in the same seed cells and about a week later I got seedlings. So this entire time I have assumed that this was Tythonia or Mexican sunflower. I have treated it as Tythonia, planted it thinking it was Tythonia. But then I noticed, do you see these spikes? <laughs> oh, 
on these leaves, they're pretty big. So Tythonia does not get spikes, but do you know what does? Pumpkin on a stick. <laughs> so I'm not sure what exactly happened to my Tythonia, but this is actually pumpkin on a stick, which I am excited about. Um, I've never grown it before. It's just so weird that it never germinated and I sowed something else and then it decided to germinate. I have some perennial herbs tucked in this garden. So I have thyme, I have some chamomile, some oregano that I grew from seed this year that is already taking off. I have a sage plant planted back here and some chives that are starting to bloom. I also have some more daisies tucked in and these are bells of Ireland. I'm so excited. I wasn't sure how they would do with the heat, but it looks like they are starting just barely. I don't know if you can see to send up a flower stalk. Oh, here's one. If you can see this really pretty flower stalk in there, but just barely starting to send up a flower stalk and it makes a really pretty filler for cut flower arrangements. This is also a flower bed and it's a little bit of a bed in transition. So I actually just pulled some hyacinth out and I replaced it with some gomfrina. So those will be blooming soon. I'm really excited. If you're not familiar with this flower, it looks like something that Willy Wonka would grow. <laughs> it's so cute. It looks like little um, lollipops. So I'll defi definitely give you an update on those. And here is my ranunculus. I've just been so happy with this this year. I've never planted this, at least not in raised beds. And I was hoping that it would do okay with the huge temperature swing we've had on the side of hot and they've done really, really well. So I'm still getting some blooms. These were ones that I planted a little bit later. So down here, you can see these ones are pretty much finished. I had these under row cover a few weeks earlier than I had these, but oh, I've just really, really enjoyed these this year. Oh, look at this. This is what I was talking about with those volunteer tomatoes. That is a tomato. So I've had so many of these this year, so I didn't notice it in the middle of all this ranunculus, but I will definitely be digging it out and plan to get somewhere else in the garden. And on the other side of this trellis, I have some more sweet peas that again, are just kind of taking their time. I might've gotten them in a little bit too late this year. I decided to plant them from seed instead of direct or transplanting them. And I kind of wish I hadn't, but that's okay. Once these come out, I will actually be uh, putting in some yard long beans that will grow all the way up this trellis and fall through. So it'll be a really cool archway. And in this bed, I have peas, cosmos and ground cherries. I have had a really disappointing year for peas. Again, I direct sow them because in years past, they've done really well by direct sowing. This year, we just had such weird swings in temperature that they really got off to a slow start and now it's getting hot. So they're having a lot of issues getting sunburnt from the tons of rain and then high humidity. So I will get a little bit, but I had one whole variety that didn't even come up. I think the seed was a little bit old, but that's okay. You win some, you lose some with gardening. And after these peas come out, I will be direct sowing some cucumbers and they will grow up along that trellis to grow vertically. And I have eight or so ground cherries planted and I think I've got a few, yes, a little bit of fruit forming already. And again, oh, the flea beetles just love these ground cherries. So I've been treating with some diatomaceous earth, but we just had a lot of rain. So it doesn't seem to be affecting the health of the plant too bad. And once they get bigger, the flea beetles will kind of move on because the leaves get tough. But I've got, I think about eight of these and I definitely had some volunteers come up, which is great. And last but not least, I have my garlic bed. So this bigger variety is a German hardneck and I actually planted these from cloves that I grew last year. And so it's stored really well. In fact, I still have some of my harvest from last year that is doing just fine. So I recently just pruned all of the scapes off of these. So that means they are definitely in the process of forming bulbs and you can see some of the foliage is starting to die back, which means that they will be ready to harvest pretty soon. These smaller ones are a soft neck variety and I had some issues with rabbits getting into my bed. So some of these like this one back here didn't quite do as well. So I'm interested to see when these are ready to harvest how they did. But as a rule, I have had much better luck with hard neck varieties. So now I'm going to take you over to my berry beds and also my pollinator bed. So let me show you a wide angle first. I have some blueberries here. These are raspberries. 
Back here I have a pollinator garden and up along this fence line I have my blackberries. With my blackberries I have a ponca variety and this is a, an anorect variety. You can see I have lots of fruit. I'm hoping we can keep the birds off without netting but that might be wishful thinking so we might definitely have to add some netting to this. Um, here I have a Natchez, I believe is how you say it. This is supposed to be a semi-erect variety. It definitely looks more like a trailing variety, but I read that it can sometimes trail in its first year. So these primocanes that are coming up definitely looked more, look more like a semi-erect variety. So I'm hoping that's the case, but they are just full of fruit. And here I have a Washita, which is a trailing variety. So this variety didn't do as well for me last year so I got some replacement plants and they have definitely started to come up along with a replacement Natchez so they're doing well this year. We have had some major pest issues in this area. We have had um, shrews making tunnels. We have had not one but two moles <laughs> tunneling under plants and birds, just normal birds and rabbits, the normal issues. But because we had a mole tunneling all through this mulch and because it's in mulch, I didn't notice it like I would in grass. So it was definitely affecting some of the roots of these plants. And I think that's why I was having trouble with some of these um, bare root varieties or the bare root um, plants taking off. But I think so far, so good. I think we've taken care of the issue, hopefully, but we'll definitely keep an eye out. You can see here this Washita is sending up plenty of suckers, but I try to keep them on this side of the soaker hose system. It's a little difficult to tell, but this is a slope. So the water will run down this way. So any suckers that grow up behind, I will dig up and transplant on the bottom part of the slope so that they get watered. Here is my pollinator bed and I don't have a ton in bloom, but in just a few weeks to maybe a month, this will be full of flowers. So a lot of these are perennials. Most of them are perennials actually. And a lot of them I've actually grown from seed. So for example, this bee balm, this is in its second year. So it should hopefully bloom this year, but I grew this from seed and look, it is just massive. So I will do my best to show you without stepping on plants, but I have some Shasta daisies here that are getting ready to bloom. I have some rose campion is down there at the bottom and I have some canterbury bells that I grew from seed. So they will probably actually bloom next year. Here I have some salvia and I have some white hibiscus and tucked down below this white hibiscus. I do have some sunflowers, but do you like my fake plastic owl? Look at this. Ugh. The birds just love these sunflowers and they will come in with their beaks and just like peck at the flowers or the leaves, excuse me, and just completely take them away. So I'm hoping this guy survives. This is a strawberry blonde sunflower. I also have a buttercream sunflower planted there. I have several dahlias. This one's getting off to a slow start again because of the birds. <laughs> several dahlias planted here. And then I have some Claire Austin climbing roses along this trellis. So if you follow me on Instagram or TikTok, you may have seen the story that I did on these roses and the absolute ringer <laughs> that they have been put through this year. So this is actually where that mole tunneled. And in particular, this side, I didn't realize it until I started to notice a lot of chlorosis on the leaves. So I dug down to see if it was possibly a watering issue and that's when I noticed the huge air pocket around the roots. So it was getting hardly any nutrients. And so once I took care of that issue, definitely hit it with some fertilizer and, with iron and it's starting to green back up. But because it was so stressed, it got a little bit of a fungus on it. And I've also had quite a bit of pest issues, which isn't out of the ordinary, but again, it just added a whole lot of stress to this plant. So this side definitely fared a little bit better and look at these blooms. Oh, they're so gorgeous. So again, a little bit of a fungal issue on this one and just the normal caterpillars that I'm dealing with. So once these blooms are done, I'm gonna be spraying that to take care of both of those issues. Sorry, I'm gonna be competing with some lawn mowers, but again, <laughs> the price you pay for living in a neighborhood. But here I have some Autumn Joy Sedum. These are actually what I think are resurrection lilies. I actually just cut down the greenery, so we'll see if those pop back up a little bit later. I have some Shast, no, excuse me, Black Eyed Susans here that will be blooming soon. I have some more Rose, Rose Campion. This is a balloon flower. It actually just finished blooming, so it's, you can kind of see some more blooms. So it's not a very pretty, uh, in a pretty stage right now, but you can see from the tag. It gets these really just cute 
white flowers that kind of start in these little pods that look almost like balloons. So they're super cute. So I just planted this a few months ago. Here I have some butterfly weed that is starting to bloom. It is so pretty and fingers crossed that we might get some monarchs on it this year. I have some creeping phlox, some bachelor's buttons, and some red dianthus. On this side of the bed, I have some mums, some more red dianthus, more creeping phlox, and here's some more of that balloon flower. This is a little bit more of a purpley color, but oh, it is so cute. And then here, under this makeshift clove, cloche <laughs> um, made from a tomato cage, a dollar store mesh laundry bag, and some landscaping pins. I have some more bachelor's buttons. And I have noticed a rabbit getting in. Oh, it is so frustrating. I do welcome wildlife, but rabbits can really, and birds for that matter, can really just lay waste to a bed. And I really obviously can't net this entire bed. So I do my best to help individual plants, but it, it's so strange. They didn't bother this one at all, but this one they were really, really almost completely taking down to the ground. Here I have some Sweet William that was a winter sowing project for me. And then here I have some carnations planted. I recently just pruned down my hibiscus that was, no, excuse me, my hyacinth that was growing here. So I have some carnations planted. I also have some more black-eyed Susans. I have some purple echinacea in the back. I have more uh, dahlias that will be growing up soon, three of those. I have some columbine that is pretty much done. I need to deadhead all of these seed pods, although I think I might save some seed off of these. And I have some peonies just kind of tucked in. They're fairly new. So I have three of these, they're Surly Temple peonies, and I had two of them bloom. I, I was hoping all three of them would this year, but again, they're fairly new. So this one didn't quite bloom, these did. So I just need to go and deadhead these. I have some Celosia just kind of tucked in that is starting to bloom. In this back corner, I have some more white hibiscus. I have some hollyhocks here and another tucked in back there. And I also have two other sunflowers that are faring a little bit better than their sisters on the other corner. This is again a buttercream sunflower and a strawberry blonde. And I think I do have one tiny little hollyhock that just started to sprout. Here in this little corner I have some more lupine. This was another winter sowing project for me. I have two more that I've had to cover again. Rabbits, birds, they have just really done a number. I hope these bounce back but for right now I'm just having to keep them covered. Here are my raspberry beds and these are fairly new so they are crazy overgrown but I kind of just let them do their thing. They're in their second year so next year I will definitely be going in and thinning a lot of these primocanes that are coming up. But this is a Killarney. It is a summer red raspberry and it's doing well so far with fruit. And next to it I have a Prelude. This is also a summer variety. And here I have some black raspberries, and this is a Bristol black raspberry. And it, again, is in its second year and has some fruit. Here is my fall raspberry bed, and these will actually bear on primocanes. So they will send up new shoots every year, which I will cut down after fruiting, and they will bear on those first year canes. So I have a Crimson Night, which is this really delicious, super sweet, dark red variety. And I have an autumn gold, which is a gold color, super sweet, not quite as sweet as the Crimson Night, but it's a really, really delicious fall raspberry. And again, starting to get some fruit. And here is my blueberry bed. So I did actually did a video for my planting berries video. I talked about this bed and how I had these two varieties in a pot for about three years, and I was worried they wouldn't transplant well. But as you can see, they're starting to get some new growth so that means hopefully that they are taking off and they are just loaded with fruit so this is a sunshine variety i believe it's a dwarf variety so i don't think it'll get too much bigger than this maybe a little bit this guy i have no clue what variety <laughs> variety it is i bought it on clearance at a box store several years ago didn't keep the tag because i honestly didn't think it would survive it looked half dead but oh my gosh look at all these berries I'm definitely gonna have to net these. The birds will be all over these. And here I actually have a wildflower cosmos that survived the winter. I This is definitely supposed to be an annual in my area. It dropped a ton of seed in the fall 
and then I just cut it down to the ground figuring it was done and it came back so it should be blooming here before too long. And these are two new varieties that I purchased this year. So I have a pink lemonade and I have a Brightwell rabbit eye. So this one will get pretty big, these rabbit eye varieties. So it may get upwards of six, seven feet tall. This one should get, mm, maybe five, maybe six, I don't know, maybe taller. <laughs> we'll see how well it does in these beds. I have noticed, again, fungal issues are really, really pre prevalent in our area because of all the humidity. So I don't know if you can see, you can see a little bit of spotting on these. So once the fruit is finished, this one does have mm, a little bit of fruit. Not bad for its first year. Um, I will probably be going in with some copper fungicide um, definitely in the fall. I might try it a little bit on a cooler day or evening in the summer. I don't want to risk burning the leaves, which copper fungicide can definitely do, but I want to make sure that I kind of nip any fungal issues in the bud. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a bird's eye view of my backyard. So I would say I have a fairly large size backyard compared to maybe some, maybe not for others, um, but I'm only growing in a small portion of this backyard. So you can definitely grow a ton of food for your family or for yourself in a very small space. And even if you don't have an actual yard to put a garden in, there's container gardening and vertical gardening and aeroponic, hydroponic gardening, patio containers, lots of options for you to still grow food. So for example, this is my covered back patio and it's easily accessible to my kitchen. So I like to keep a lot of my annual herbs so I can easily grab them when I'm cooking. And this is a raised bed patio container we recently just got. And so in this, I have some basil, I have rosemary. Rosemary is actually considered a tender perennial in our area, so I actually have it in this bed because over the winter I have a cover, like a cold frame that can go over this. So I also have some dill, I have some parsley here in the back, and I also have cilantro and just an extra marigold I had tucked in for some color. So I actually recently harvested pretty heavily off this. So some of them are a little sparse. And this area gets partial sun. I would say it gets about four hours of really solid sun a day. It'll get more in the middle of winter. So it's really, excuse me, middle of summer. So it's really good for the cilantro and for the dill that don't like those really hot temperatures, they'll start to bolt. For the basil and the parsley, it does okay, but good enough for me to definitely come out and grab some fresh herbs when I'm cooking. So let me show you a few of the future plans that we have for our backyard. My plan is to get rid of having so much grass. The grass, although pretty and nice for kids to play on and the dog to run around, it doesn't support a lot of insects and beneficial species. So. Again, we started with these beds kind of skirting that fence line. The plan eventually is to turn most of this area into a small home orchard. It's gonna take me quite a bit of time to get the ground prepped in order to keep those trees happy, but that's the eventual plan. And the reason I don't have much in the center of my yard is because we are toying with the idea of maybe getting a pool. So I have left the center of my yard mainly untouched for that very reason. And again, there's my raised bed garden. And here I have an eyesore of a trampoline. <laughs> but eventually when my kids outgrow this, the plan is to possibly put a really small greenhouse here. I have to see what my HOA will allow me to do. But you can also see in this corner, I have my compost bins. So now I'll show you my aeroponic garden. You can probably hear it a little bit in the background along with a lawnmower <laughs> and a few of the potted plants that I keep and bring in during the winter. Here is my aeroponic garden and the tower garden is the brand name of it, but I love to grow tomatoes on this. They do so well with this consistent watering. And these are San Marzano tomatoes. So I can usually fit about four tomatoes because they will get pretty big. But yeah, this has been such a fun little garden to have. Sometimes I'll grow lettuce in the top, it does really well, but for right now I'm just doing tomatoes. I have some mint in a pot. You should always, always grow any kind of mint in a pot unless you want a ton of mint. <laughs> and if you do, then by all means plant it in the ground and you will get what you asked for. But if you don't want mint because it's an aggressive plant to go everywhere, then definitely keep it in a pot. And this is my accidental orange tree. If you follow me on Instagram or TikTok, you've heard the story of my accidental orange tree. But this is a Calamon and orange tree. 
I recently just harvested all the oranges off it and made some delicious marmalade, but you can see new growth is starting. And in just a few weeks to a month, this thing will be full of the best smelling orange blossoms you have ever smelled and be covered with bees. And here I have a plumeria, a friend of mine who's a master gardener, he's from Hawaii. He gave me a cutting and it's done pretty well. It always looks really rough over the winter. I have to bring it inside because it definitely wouldn't survive here in zone 6B, but it bounces back pretty quickly. It's in sort of a random spot. I have to keep it um, under my covered deck when we're expecting rain because it does not like a lot of water. And this is a new to me plant. This is a fig tree. I've always wanted one. I'm super excited. It definitely wouldn't survive the winter here though, so it will have to come in over the winter. Thanks so much for joining me on my garden tour. I will definitely be doing another one midsummer so you can see a lot more of those vegetables and flowers in maturity. And as always, don't forget to follow me on TikTok and Instagram where I post short, easy to follow tips and tricks for the garden. Until then, I'll see you next time. Bye.